I'm here hiking around the edge of a volcano, Crater Lake in Oregon. Isn't that just the most astounding thing you've ever seen in your whole life? You just can't get over the size of this place. Oh my goodness. At 592 meters deep, it's the deepest lake in the USA, and it just might be home to one of the oldest stories in the entire world. The volcano that once stood here is called Mount Mazama by geologists. It would have resembled other volcanoes in the area, like Mount Hood, except it was much bigger. The eruption began on the north side of the volcano. An enormous column of pumice and ash burst out of the rock, reaching up to 50 kilometers high. Winds carried this ash across the Pacific Northwest and into southern Canada, turning day into night. So much magma erupted that cracks began to appear in the mountain wall. Eventually, the mountain collapsed into the empty magma chamber below. More magma was pushed out of the side of the volcano, sending pyroclastic flows down the side of the mountain. After all of that, groundwater trapped by the eruption began exploding out of the ground in huge steam explosions. Where the mountain once stood was now this enormous hole, eight kilometers wide, 1.6 kilometers deep. And you just can't imagine the force of something that could move this much earth, the sound it must have made the image of a mountain collapsing in on itself. It would have been the most enormous volcanic eruption. It took half a million years for Mount Mazama to grow, layer by layer, eruption by eruption, to reach 12,000 feet. And then in the matter of a few hours, the mountain was gone. Over time, smaller eruptions and rain and snow filled in the lake, giving us the landscape we have today. Standing here on the rim of the volcano, you just can't imagine the force of the eruption. It, it just must have been the most incredible thing for the local Klamath people to have seen. Astonishing, terrifying, probably. The native Klamath people call the mountain Tumsumni, the mountain with the top cut off. According to their stories, the lake was created when chief of the below world became jealous of the spirit chief and his beautiful people so he decided to marry Loha, the daughter of the Klamath chief. She refused and hid away with a neighboring tribe. The enraged spirit vowed revenge and ran back and forth under the mountain, throwing lightning and raining fireballs down on the Klamath. The Klamath prayed to the spirit chief to save them. They fought and the spirit chief sent chief of the underworld back down under the mountain, collapsing it on top of him. The Klamath medicine men then sang their sacred songs for rain and snow to put out the fires, and the lake was born. That's obviously a very crude summary of the tale. I'll put a, a source in the description where you can read the story in much better detail. But what a fantastic story, of the formation of this land and of this catastrophic eruption. What's really incredible about it, though, what I really find just so fascinating, is that geologists have dated this eruption to 7,700 years ago. That's a long time. That's a long time ago. Before I had heard this Klamath story, I was really skeptical, honestly, that an oral history could be passed down for 7,000 years. It just seems like such a long amount of time. And coming from Britain, we don't believe any of our stories date back 7,000 years, you know, that's 2,000 years before Stonehenge was built. And there's just been a lot of population movements in that time. We just don't have stories that are that old, genuinely. I don't believe so. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. I'd love to hear about them. But I think we sort of approach oral history with a default skepticism. I certainly did. There are just a lot of ancient tales that could be about any time, really, couldn't they? The great flood in the Bible, could we ever pinpoint which flood that was? Probably not, probably not. There's just a lot of floods and pinpointing one specific flood in the tale, in an ancient tale, it's just so hard. But this is why the Klamath tale at Crater Lake is so interesting to me. Volcanic eruptions aren't like that. They happen very rarely, especially catastrophic ones. The story about the mountain collapsing could only really be referencing this event 7,700 years ago. Yeah, 
volcanoes don't collapse in on themselves all the time. It, it has to be a story about that time. It, it just has to be a story that's 7,000 years old. There isn't really a better way to explain it. And so that got me thinking, are there any other ancient tales about volcanic eruptions? This is Lake Surprise in the Australian state of Victoria. Like Crater Lake, it sits in the crater of a dormant volcano called Budge Bim. The entire landscape around it is actually super interesting. The Gunjit Mara people who call this region home build a complex system of dams and channels and weirs in order to direct water and farm eels. These date back thousands upon thousands of years, at least 6,000 years, older than the pyramids, older than Stonehenge. I'm pretty sure it's the earliest example anywhere in the world of a sophisticated agriculture system. Place a basket in the middle that's about 12 feet long. It'll run past the wall. The eels will feed through the basket when there's water in here. Um, and they'd come in and then they'd realise that they're stuck in the pen. Um, and when they try to get out, they'll head back towards the wall, but they won't find the exit of the basket. It's definitely super cool. It's a fantastic spot, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Today though, let's focus on the volcano itself. Like everyone all around the world, the Gunjit Mara people have stories of their origins and their land. In these stories, Budge Bim was an ancestral creation being, a being that burst out of the ground in an eruption. The volcano was this being's head, the lava its teeth that it spat out. Again, like here at Crater Lake, the story of Budge Bim seems to be about a volcanic eruption. This being, ancestral being, emerging from the earth, spitting lava. It kind of has to be about a volcanic eruption. What's so incredible about the story from Budge Bim is that according to this research from 2019, the volcano erupted 37,000 years ago. 37,000 years. I don't even know what to say about that. That's a long time ago. In population genetics, in genetics they consider a generation- Oh, chipmunks! Did you see that? Nice! But in population genetics, back to the topic, a generation is considered to be 30 years. So, if the volcano erupted 37,000 years ago, that's over 1,000 generations that this story would have to be passed down. That is a huge amount of time, and it sort of makes you wonder, why pass it down for so long? The first obvious reason why the eruption of Budge Bim or Crater Lake could be preserved for thousands and thousands of years is that it made a huge impact on the people living here at that time. Seeing a new volcano emerge out of the ground or watching an entire mountain collapse in on itself is obviously an incredibly dramatic event to witness. But maybe stories are preserved for another reason than that. This is just one possible explanation, but perhaps the transmission of these stories became an essential aspect of what it meant to be Klamath or Gunjit Mara and live in these regions. Let's compare it super quickly to Neolithic Britain. Britain and Ireland are full of these really elaborate burial structures that date to the Neolithic period. I went to visit one near my house last year. Look at the, look at the size of these slabs, they're gargantuan. Some Irish examples in particular are enormous. These were places of communal burial, not individual burial. We don't know exactly why these spaces were built, but some archaeologists hypothesize that these burial structures were placed at prominent points in the landscape as a way to tie the community to the area. Your tribe, your village, your people had an emotional connection to the land, but also a very visible connection to the land. You could literally point to the place where your ancestors were buried. Maybe the passage of oral traditions for thousands upon thousands of years operates in a similar way. It sort of tied the people to the land because they knew the story of the land. Ooh, I don't know. I can't really speak to why those stories get passed down for so long. It's just an idea, really. I don't want to speak for the Klamath and Gundijmara people. I'll put sources in the description down below and you can uh, read them for yourself. Whoa, that's cold. Whoa, <laughs> straight over the shorts. My God, my feet are going numb. 
<laughs> That's incredible. All I know is we have two stories about volcanic eruptions and the science that dates them to deep, 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 deep into history, thousands upon thousands of years. Pretty incredible. Shout out to the Klamath, the Gundij Mara, and shout out to both of these volcanoes for leaving just a huge impact on people way in the past. Wow. It's wild to think the water beneath my feet goes down for 500 meters. It's almost 600. That's not great to think about. Yeah. 